In this video I want to talk a little bit about auxiliary storage. Uh, at first I want to take a historical look at auxiliary storage. Auxiliary storage first of all is also called secondary storage. It's, it's the place where we put stuff that we don't want to use right now, we want to use later on. And in the old days, in the 40s, one of the first mechanisms for auxiliary storage was punch cards. Now punch cards didn't last very long. Uh, soon in the 50s we went to magnetic tape and later on in the 60s magnetic disc was introduced and as we continued to evolve from a technological point of view we went into optical storage which is laser or light technology and you know there's where your CDs and DVDs come in and we have flash technology um, your thumb drive or flash drive or USB drive also a memory card. These are the kinds of things that uses flash technology, flash memory. And of course today we we often store things up in the cloud. Um, computers that are not on our site that are someplace else that we uh, we tend to store things um, when needed. So this is sort of like a very quick evolution. A look at the historical perspective of of uh, auxiliary storage. Now, uh, there's also another term that we need to at least discuss. A solid state device could be a hard drive, um, even your thumb drive uh, or flash drives. That's a device that has no moving parts. No moving parts. Uh, they tend to use a little bit less power and when you hear the term solid state device, that's what they're talking about. No moving parts. Now, I'd like to talk just for a second about magnetic tape and magnetic disc and do a quick comparison. As I said before, tape was introduced uh, in the 50s and tape stores things sequentially in order. And tape lends itself to something, a special type of processing called batch processing, which is group processing, not immediate. So payroll is an example of batch processing. I know uh, in the old days when we wanted to do payroll here where I work, um, a bunch of documents were dropped off at the company that did our payroll and when the guy got around to it, you know, he processed all of our checks in some type of group arrangement and it wasn't very immediate. It may have been that day, that afternoon, maybe the next day, but batch processing implies group or not immediate. In the old days when you used a credit card, they used to have these rollover machines and they would take a and make a copy of the transaction using this rollover machine and then sometime maybe that evening or the next day the store manager would gather all of these copies put them in an envelope and send them to Telsa or to wherever MasterCard headquarters you know was located and then maybe the next day or the day after that somebody at MasterCard would enter at one time all of these transactions from that particular uh, retail store. Well that is group processing not immediate. Another example of group processing just so you know kind of what it is is uh, even today when we give a students a test and we use those Scantrons the teacher collects the test and maybe that afternoon or the next day at one time the teacher would grade the test by putting them through some kind of Scantron reader. That's group processing, not immediate. That's batch processing. Well tape, how things are stored on tape in a sequential way was lend itself to that kind of processing. Well in the 60s magnetic disk was introduced and it was direct access storage device which means data can be stored on a disk anywhere. Um, and you can retrieve data on that disk without reading all the other data on that disk first. That's called direct access storage device. You see guys on the tape, imagine storing things on a tape near the middle of the tape. If you want to get to that particular part of the tape, you'd have to read all the other files first, sequentially. Well, disk didn't work like that. You could store stuff on a disk at any random place and you could retrieve it immediately. You could retrieve it without reading all the other stuff. Um, that's called a direct access storage device. You don't have to go through all the other files. You can directly get to your file. Well that lent itself to something called interactive processing which was immediate and individual. Um, an example of that is when you buy gasoline today. 
you put your credit card in the point of sale terminal, that pump where you buy the gas, it's called a point of sale, and they won't let you purchase the gas until they verify the validity of the credit card. And then before you get in your car and close the door, your account has already been updated. It is The processing is immediate and individual. When you buy concert tickets today, uh, or you buy an airline ticket, you can immediately check to see if that flight or that concert has tickets available, and then you can immediately determine or make that purchase. In the old days, if you wanted to buy a concert ticket here, uh, I remember when the Beatles came many, many, many years ago, um, you would have to get in your car, drive to the venue, make a purchase, and they would give you the one ticket that was printed for that seat. Well, today that just doesn't happen. And the reason we can do, we have the ability to buy these tickets as we do, is because we have auxiliary storage like magnetic disc. In fact, the use of disk changed completely our expectations of how computers can be used. So that's a really quick overview um, at the kind of the historical look of auxiliary storage.